Hi, my name is Thomas Finch, and I'm the 5-Minute Pharmacist. I'm here to answer your pharmacy questions in 5 minutes or less. Today, I'm specifically going to be answering your questions on vitamins. Now, Joe from Berkeley, California asks, Is it true that we really don't absorb very many of the nutrients from supplements? How about fortified foods? Well, there's lots of different kinds of nutrients, but specifically talking about vitamins, you can break them down into two main types with two separate answers. Those are the fat-soluble vitamins and the water-soluble vitamins. What's that mean? Let's go find out. So, we're here to do some kitchen science. This is oil, and this is water. Now I can mix them up, but they're going to sort themselves right out again. Okay, you can see that. Now here in the syringe, I have some, some vitamin A and some other related compounds called carotenoids that I actually extracted from carrot juice just for this. Watch what happens when I add them to the water-oil mixture. I hope this works. Okay, did it work? It did, it worked. Okay, so if you look, you can see that all the vitamin A stayed here in the top layer, and you can tell because the oil is now orange, whereas the water is still clear just like it was to start with. And so that's how we know that vitamin A is a fat-soluble vitamin. And this becomes important because some parts of your body are more like this, for example, your brain, your liver, the fat under your skin, whereas some parts of your body are more like this clear layer down here. That would be your blood or the inside of your uh, intestines or your muscles. And this difference ends up determining how well different vitamins are absorbed and how well your body can hold onto them once you've absorbed them. Fat-soluble vitamins are hard to absorb, but easy to hold onto. The fat-soluble vitamins are vitamin A, but also vitamins D, K, and E as well. The fat-soluble vitamins are hard to get because your blood is like this. The inside of your intestines is like this. It's all watery. There's nothing there for it to dissolve in. And so, say a carrot like this one, it's going to have easily 300% of your day's vitamin A, but you can't absorb it if you eat the carrot by itself. On the other hand, if you were to take the carrot and have it with a little bit of peanut butter, the vitamin A in the carrot dissolves in the fat in the peanut butter, just like our vitamin A in the experiment dissolved in the oil right here. And then your body can absorb it when it absorbs the oil. It's actually pretty good. So it's true. When you take a fat-soluble vitamin by itself, you don't absorb very much of it. However, if you have it with fortified foods, it actually works very well. If you take, uh, for example, milk or soy milk with vitamin D, or if you have your total with your white fatty liquid of choice poured over it, that's going to be a great way to absorb your fat-soluble vitamins. Um, you will notice, however, that they're hard to get rid of, like I said earlier. Uh, so you can get too much of your fat-soluble vitamins. That's why when you look at, for example, total, it only has 25% of your vitamin D and only 10% of your vitamin A. And that's to protect you from getting too much. Okay, so the water-soluble vitamins are almost exactly the opposite of that. Um, they're very easy to take in, but they're also very easy to get rid of. For example, if you were to wake up every morning and take a pill that had 1,000% of your daily vitamin B2, you would absorb virtually the full 1,000% of it. Your body can do that. However, you're going to urinate out the other 900%. It just hangs out in your bloodstream until your kidneys filter it out and you excrete it as pee. Amira from the internet asks, can I take vitamin C every day to prevent the cold or the flu? Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's no good evidence that suggests that vitamin C will prevent you getting the cold or the flu. However, there have been some studies where people who take vitamin C after they already have a cold have started feeling better faster than people who didn't. So if that's your thing and you're feeling a little down, go ahead and pop some vitamin C. It might just help. And so our last question for today is our vegan question of the day. And I hope that you don't think all vegans are crazy after hearing this. Uh, but a friend of a friend asks, can I get my vitamin B12 by eating garden soil? Now, this is the first question I've ever really had to research, and I was a little bit surprised to find out that the answer is yes. You can get your vitamin B12 by eating garden soil, particularly when that garden soil is fertilized with cow manure. Cows, normally the bacteria that live in their gut, their microbiome can produce vitamin B12, but that only works when they're fed a high-quality diet. Unfortunately, most production animals are fed on a least cost basis, which means they're given the very cheapest food available, and they're not able to make their vitamin B12 on their own. And so it's not at all uncommon for feedlots to supplement vitamin B12 to the cattle there. 
And so we end up with this strange Rube Goldberg contraption where the cow gets a vitamin B supplement, poops out the vitamin B12, you fertilize your garden soil with the cow manure, and then you eat the soil. You could have gotten it so much easier by just taking the supplement yourself instead of having the supplement given to the cow. Then you know exactly how much you're getting. You're not just eating a handful of dirt and guessing at how much B12 you're getting. All right, well, I am the Five Minute Pharmacist, and I encourage you to get down in the links below, get on Twitter, get on Google+, get on our Facebook page, and submit your questions about health, diet, pharmacy, anything related to drugs is fair game. And uh, we base our shows on your questions. So I'll be seeing you soon. Were you eating the rest of that carrot? Of course I'm eating the rest of my carrot.